Nothing was ever like archiving our existence into like just the daily grind. And so a lot of my work was about wanting to really look at what it means to have a body in public. It was in response to a lack of conversation around gender nonconformity, uh, particularly when it like intersects with race. Hi, I'm Travis Alabanza and I'm an artist. To become more aware of what my identities were and how they were affecting my life, I wanted to find other people that could also kind of resonate with that. I'm in Bristol, there's a whole wealth of like gay people here, it's gonna be fine. I didn't find any other black or queer people here. You know, it was like going out on the on the queer scene again, it's very white, very cis. Where else do you go? You're a young gay person in Bristol, mm. what else do you do? You're gonna go to OMG, you wanna... that's it. OMG, <laughs> that's it. exactly. OMG vibes back in the day, flamingos. Oh my, bring your earplugs and pretend that you're dancing <laughs> exactly. in B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> the reason why I left Bristol was because I didn't think there was like any reason to stay creatively and my expression and my queerness and my blackness, I just really thought that there had to be more than what I was experiencing. I feel like this was the first time coming back with some questions and wanting to explore things. We don't find what we want. And then we have choices to then like isolate or leave. Yeah. Right? Or a combination of the two. Or then put like a tremendous amount of energy to then start something up yourself. I think prior to Kiki, one of the things that was pretty clear is that people were really, really isolated. So when I met you, Sharif, you said you didn't know anyone who was black and queer in Bristol. I was aware of different pockets of people and also of different generations. The, the growth of Kiki has been such you know, a revelation to me. It's been beautiful. I'm really proud that Kiki's here and we're doing what we're doing. I feel like it's interesting you mentioned like isolation. That's definitely what I felt like mm. in the city. And I feel like my response to isolation without the resources to pull people was to go to history. If you're feeling alone, sometimes you then try and search for people that were there before you so you can be like excited that there was someone else there. Because I work with lots of lots and lots of trans people who are 70s, 80s, and they've been trans maybe for the past five years, maybe for the past 50 years. Mm. Did you find any non-binary history? No, it was really hard. I mean, yeah. if I'm honest, I wasn't really looking at like a history that wasn't black. Sure. I was kind of only at this point interested in like what it was like to find or try and find another black gender non-conforming person. It's interesting. I think looking at the stories of blues or some of the calypsos that I uh, listen to and people do refer to non-binary uh, communities and yeah. people even remote villages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it feels like a quite a recent problemization Mm. of non-binary identities and queerness. Mm. As long as black people existing, there were people that were not gender conforming. Now that might look different, and that might have not been using the same words that we use now, but we sure have existed. Growing up in Bristol, it's hard to ignore, like Bristol's got such a huge and rich black history. So I made the assumption, well, of course, that must mean that there's a rich black LGBT history, right? I thought the same thing. And, it was actually really hard to find an archived black queer and I was specifically looking for trans history in Bristol and I wonder, has that been the same experience for you and you as well? One of the problems has been is around the black presence in Bristol is recorded and documented. I think just fits a, a, really a, um, quite a narrow trope. So it's either resistance, it's either wind rush, it's either, um, it, it's, it's a certain heteronormative. It doesn't really look at the richness and variety of black life in mm -hmm. many ways. Mm -hmm. And LGBT stories within that are lost or under-researched. I think a side effect of oppression is that it flattens people out. Years and years of oppressing people makes the perception of them to be like monolith, two-dimensional. I think like whiteness and straightness is given a nuance and complexity that blackness and transness and queerness is never allowed. Like when we look back on in history, because the people that are archiving and because the people that are allowed to tell history are not from those communities often, we see like a white version of history which flattens out black people. And I think that that obviously has an effect on us. We don't magically become free of that view of people. 
think about the slave ships departing Africa, that within those bodies, men and women, there were black queer men and women. At what point were they somehow seen as separate from the history of blackness? Not just men and women, right? You know, I think that that's like, we just didn't even have a way of developing a language or like how people maybe had to simplify themselves. All the people I'm reading about right now may have been more complex than they're archived. May have been more than a man, may have been more than a woman. And maybe they weren't. Maybe they're exactly what the people are saying they are. But too many gender non-conforming people in history have had their gender non-conformity erased and flattened out. What we need to do looking back is look at the complexity and the plurality of historical figures so that we, we can always make visible that LGBT history. So it doesn't sit as an addition to uh, black stories of struggle, it's integral. As we've seen from these conversations, the archive is so few for us, right? And so I think it ignores like, the real possibility that there were people like you before. I think it's so important that black trans people, black gender non-conforming people, black queerness, however we want to put it, is put at a forefront in a conversation about blackness is because I think it will benefit all black people to start thinking through a trans lens of viewing these things because under like white European colonizer eyes, like the realty is they're not seeing any of us as fully man or woman. And they have historically not done that, right? Like black men were castrated. Black women were put in cages and compared to animals because of the shapes of their figures. It doesn't matter how they're identifying, they will never actually fully see us as people, let alone the genders that we say we are. A holistic black struggle isn't just one that accepts trans people, right? It's not two separate things. It's like not supporting a trans movement, it's seeing how the trans movement is the movement too.